Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a different kind of video. A while back it was requested for me to do a video on my military experience, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm actually going to break this video up into three parts. The first part will consist of going to my recruiter and going to the MEP station. Second part would be reception and going to basic training. And then the third part would be the AIT, which is Advanced Individual Training. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this video so I can let you guys know everything I had to deal with to get where I am right now. So going to my recruiter, let me first tell you the reason why I joined the military. So I worked a few jobs, most of them being in the call center, customer service, and then I was just sick of doing that, you know, without having any guarantee that I would keep the job. Like I didn't see it as being a career. So having a conversation with my husband one day, you know, he was joking around saying, you can't do what I do. Like he was basically telling me I should join the military, but at the same time telling me that I couldn't do what he do. So me being the Sagittarius that I am, you know, got to prove him wrong. So I went and talked to my recruiter. Hey, Dr. Brown, you're probably not watching this, but if you ever come across it, what's up? So I went to my recruiter and, you know, I told him the same thing. I want to join the Army, got to prove my husband wrong, and I'm just, you know, looking for a different career. So the very first thing I had to do was take a practice as that. So it wasn't that long. It was maybe about an hour long, about 25 questions, if I remember correctly. Could be wrong. I'm not really sure. It wouldn't happen so fast. So, yeah, there was some math. There was some um, English. And I think that was about it. So in order to take the real ASVAB, you have to get a passing score on the practice. So took the practice. Nothing looked familiar. I've been out of school now. I've been out of school going on eight or nine years. And during that time, it was about six or seven years, I think. Or maybe, yeah, I'm not sure. So, yeah, took the practice ASVAB. I got a passing score. So I was scheduled to take the real ASVAB. So uh, to study, mm, I didn't study. I studied for like two days, I think. Yeah, if that. And I went to a website called Fortest.com. So if you're interested in joining the Army and you haven't studied for the ASVAB and you need something to study and you don't want to buy the book, you can go to Fortest.com. It'll be right here on the video and in the description bar. The link will be there. So you can go to Fortest.com and it has like basically every single section that would be on the ASVAB. It's not the same exact questions, but it's very similar. So it will give you, you know, some insight on what the test will be like. So yeah. So two days, I <laughs> went on the website, take the practice test, and then the day comes, I take the ASVAB. I pass. Surprisingly, my recruiter was so happy. He was like, yay, I thought you wasn't going to pass. I was like, I thought I wasn't going to pass. So, you know, passed the ASVAB. Then I was scheduled to go to MEPS. So at the time, I'm going to say this. I was not on my best behavior with how I was eating, how I was working out, because I wasn't working out and I was eating whatever I wanted. So this is when the wake-up call came. I was scheduled to go get my physical at METS, which is Military Entrance Processing Station, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what it is. So, I get there, and the very first thing they do is a height and weight. So, I get my height measured. They say I'm 70 inches. I don't believe that. 70 inches is 5'10". I believe I'm 5'11 and a half, but that's besides the point. So, they do my weigh-in. I weigh in at a whopping 192 pounds. I never weighed that much in my entire life until that moment. And I was like, wait, just a few days ago, I was like 180 something pounds with my recruiter. So they tell me, go outside, sit in the hallway. So I don't know what's about to happen. I'm just, maybe they're going to tell me, okay, you have to lose weight, but you're still going to go into the army. No. A uh, man comes up to me, he was very mean, <laughs> and it, it made me almost want to cry. He was like, come over here. So I went and sat down, and he pulled out my paperwork, and he takes out a big stamp. Bam, temporary disqualified. I instantly dropped the tear. I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? He was like, you're overweight. We're giving you 30 days to lose 11 pounds or 4% body fat. So in my mind, instantly game over. I can't do this in 30 days. Like, I, I was like, it's impossible. So, I go home, I cry my eyes out, my husband telling me, you know, everything's going to be alright, you're going to lose the weight. So, I started looking up stuff on YouTube, you know, different workouts, different diets, what I can try. So, not to get deeply into what I did for my diet and for my workout routine, but this is what I did. Uh, for breakfast, healthy oatmeal, you know, cereal, healthy fruits. Lunch, it was either super salad, dinner, it was super salad. I did not eat after 9 o'clock. I did that for a straight month. 
cardio, cardio, cardio. And I mean, like, I did so much cardio, I thought I was going to die. So, by the end of the 30 days, I was able to lose 9 pounds, and I went from 36% um, 36 body fat to 24%, which is about, I think, 9 or something like that. So, yeah, that was that. So, I had to go back to my recruiter. They weighed me in. At the time, I think I was 183 or 181 pounds. I'm not sure. So, they was like, okay, you're cleared to go back to MEPS. So, they scheduled me with another appointment. Now, when I initially went to MEPS the first time, I was given a temporary job. And my temporary job was 42 Alpha, which is a human resource specialist. Now, because I was temporarily disqualified, that temporary job went away. Because you only have two days to lock in that job. So, because I didn't lock it in when I went to MEPS initially, I lost it. So, when they scheduled me to go to MEPS the second time, the only job that was available to me was a cook, a truck driver, or... Um, which is a, a unit supply specialist, which is a 92 Yankee. So I ended up going with the unit supp um, supply specialist. He told me it was pretty similar to the human resource job, but basically it's with supply. So my mind, okay, whatever. I don't want to be a cook. I don't want to be a truck driver. So I take that job and I go back to MEPS. First thing they do again, height and weight. This time the nurse is like, oh, well, you're still overweight, but we have to take you. She said, but it shouldn't be a problem because it looked like you lost a lot of weight. So they take me in. Boom, I'm good to go. I'm at 24% body fat, and my max amount was 32. So she was like, you're qualified for height and weight. So the next thing is vision and hearing. Now, I'm blind as a pet. I need glasses. I don't know why I keep on procrastinating on getting them, but, yeah, it's it was awful. So... I went to the vision testing part, and she was like, you know, this older lady. She was like, baby, you blind. Like she said, you're going to need to get glasses when you get the basic training. So I'm like, okay, I need glasses. Cool. Do the hearing. Hearing is fine. Next thing is, got to get tested for HIV. So I'm sitting, I'm waiting. And then, you know, whenever you get tested for HIV, you just start automatically thinking like, well, who would I mess with? So I personally have not messed with a lot of people, you know. I can count on one hand. But then you have to think about who did they mess with. So, you know, all these thoughts are just running through my mind. I'm just like, Lord, I hope this test come back negative. So, I go in, I take the test, and boom, everything is good. It is negative. Yes, your girl is HIV negative. So, the next thing you do, you go into a briefing, and they tell you, you know, basically what the next step is, what you're going to be doing, and then, bam, I get pulled out of the room. Okay, Jenkins, you have to take a background check because of your job. So, okay, cool. So, background check. I go into the room. There's this man with hazel eyes. I'm like, oh, his eyes are so gorgeous. Maybe he'll be nice. Wrong. This man was the devil. He told me to look straight in his eyes and tell him everything that I know. <laughs> so, I'm like, what could he possibly want to know from me? So, he start asking me, have I ever been late on a bill? Have I ever had a mortgage loan? Have I ever filed for bankruptcy? And I'm just looking at him like, no, 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 lies, but no, 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 no. Because I'm like, why are you asking all these questions if you're going to find out anyway? So, bottom line, after everything was done, I'm just sitting there biting my nails like, what the hell is going to come back? So, I was like, good, you're clear to go. So, I'm like, Lord, the Lord's on the side today. So, then... After about five hours of waiting, like, MEPS is nothing but a waiting game. Believe me when I tell you, I don't know if everybody's experience is the same, but from my experience, I got to MEPS, like, 6 o'clock in the morning. I did not leave until, like, 7 o'clock at night. I kid you not. So, they make you wait. They call you by your name and your last floor. So, I'm sitting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Phone died five hours ago. Sitting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. So, finally, they call my name. So this is the time when you select a permanent job. So I go see the guy and he's like, well, I see here that you selected that you want to be a 19 Yankee. And I was like, no, not really. And he's like, oh, I understand, but, you know, that's what's available. So we start casually conversating, you know, conversing. We start conversing about, you know, where we were from. And it just so happened he was from the same hometown as my husband. And he's like, you know what, I'm going to look and see if your old job is available. Sure enough, my old job was available, and I lapped it in. Mm -hmm. So I, was, I became a 42 alpha, which is a human resource specialist. That's my job now. So I was ecstatic. Then I'm, I was like, you know what? The Lord is really on my side today. Everything's going great. So I'm locking my job. I signed my contract. And then next thing you know, got to swear in. I look down. I have on sweatpants. I have on sneakers and a 
t-shirt. Like, I was not dressed to be swearing in and taking pictures, but, you know, gotta do it anyway. So, we went to a room. It was about maybe 20 or 30 of us. Now, starting out, it had to be like a million of us, so I guess all those other people did not make it. Anyway, so, Commander came in, you know, gave us a speech, let us know, you know, they had to be proud of us, this is the next step, and, you know, on our way to basic training, so, we swear in, and that's that, so, yeah, that was the whole MEPS process, stay tuned for the process of going to reception and basic training, and I will talk to you guys in the next video, bye.